Oh, she's got no, no, that's terrible. <laughs> I tell you what, right? I've got a little bit of this. <laughs> Another bit of musical instrument in here. I'm going to take them out. I'm going to get some records. I'm really sorry. I've got a stack of records. Oh, it's Elvis. Yeah. Wow. Right. And I've got Elvis and I've got Jesus Christ Superstar on the other side. Impeccable taste. Hey, everybody. Look at those glasses. Right. Um, my guest today is someone that I've known now, and I only met her professionally, you see, and we know each other through through working together. Many people think she's my niece, although how you could think I'm that much older is beyond me. <laughs> it's Joanna Page. Hi, Jo. Hi, yeah, how are you? Look at you with your wooden beams. Well, I'm in South Oxfordshire in my house, and I've been doing Christmas presents stuff all morning. The kids have gone back to school. They've had two weeks off for half term, and this is the first day that they've gone back. And even though they've been in school for a while, I do not think in all the years that they've been born that I've ever been so happy for them to go back to school. It's very funny seeing you. It's almost like it's not real. It's, <sighs> it's very strange. And I get I get very overexcited now that when I get to talk to people, other human beings aside from my family, I get really, really excited. Because I'm like, oh my God, there's another human. I, I find it very hard to imagine you as a mother. And, and I don't mean that in any <laughs> disrespectful way, but the thought of you being yeah. responsible I'm very responsible and I'm very, um, I'm quite strict as well. You, you've, ne you've never seen that side of me because when I finally eventually get to go to work, I just mess around and have fun because it's not even like work anymore. It's just a break from three children. So I've been very excited today that they've all gone back to school. And I'm just, oh my gosh, I've just, it's the first time in ages that I've had a morning to myself and it's just been amazing. How old are yours? three, five and seven. So the first lockdown was just exhausting. James, my husband, was building a voiceover studio. So he was just in a box, just building that all the time. Um, and I was just looking after the children. Now, um, t tell me, is, is, is James, who I've met, is James literally building it himself? Yes, yes, he, yeah, he's done the whole thing. It's fantastic. It's what like a, a man. Ball. He's built um, sort of like this big square wooden studio with wood that we had free from this massive tree that fell down. Well, he's used that wood. I know, we're, we're quite hands-on here. <laughs> now, the other thing about your husband, James Thornton, is that we had, over the first lockdown, we found a new favourite TV show we could watch with the kids, which is The Lost Gold oh. of World War Two. Oh, and I yeah. thought I kind of recognised that voice. And then it's James that does the narration. Now, have you watched it? No, I've not watched anything he's narrated. <laughs> Nothing at all. I watched a little bit of This Farming Life. Um, and that was really sweet. But I got upset because um, of the pig that had a really big testicle. And so he ended up dying. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to watch any more of that. I read a thing about you when I was doing a bit of research here that I couldn't believe. When you were at school, uh, you were head girl. Oh, um, actually, I was head girl of my junior school and I was head girl of my comprehensive school as well. Twice. All right, let, let me ask you, what was the talent pool like? I don't think that the talent pool was very big, but I'm very good at, um, at I, I know I'm very good at doing a good talk, and I'm good at auditions, and so I think even at that young age, I was already getting good at it. And I remember going in to talk to the headmaster and the deputies and everything, and really being quite, right, these are the things that I'm going to do. I want to, I don't want us, the girls to wear skirts anymore. We're gonna have a choice, we're gonna be this, we're gonna, I was full of all of my ideas, gave a really, really good talk, and out of all of them, I think the only thing I did was get us all to wear trousers, and after that, I was sort of over it then. I was a bit like, oh, I'm a bit bored now. So I don't think I actually did anything else after that. But I do remember the girls fighting. It was such a rough school. And I remember the girls fighting. And it was like St. Trinian's. I remember at one time being the head girl and keeping a lookout for the teachers as there was a circle forming with girls. And then these other two girls were like really fighting in the middle. 
One of them had her shirt pulled up over her head. She carried on fighting. The other one got three scrams, like claw marks, down her face. And as head girl, my job was sort of like to keep a lookout. And then go, they come in, they come in, the teachers are coming. And then everything was dispersed. Now can you see why I was the head girl? No, because your role as head girl, let's be very clear. If there's a fight, the head girl's role is not to keep an eye out for the teacher. You're meant to be on the side. You're the snitch. I think you misread the whole thing. Because <laughs> when I saw you doing your interview with Ruth, did she say she was head girl in there? Well, well, no, I speak no head Ruth head wasn't head girl. She was, she was. She's got a badge or something. Yeah, lost, never. Last year, I've seen an interview with Ruth on um, the internet and, um, and she's shown her head girl. <laughs> on the internet? It wasn't on the television, was it? It was, it was on the internet. You didn't read it in a book, did you? Or was it in the paper, perhaps? Did you hear somebody saying it in the street? Or did you see it written on the floor? No, you saw it on the internet. Yeah, and, uh, and she's got a head girl badge. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe that Ruth was head girl. And then I thought, oh, well, I've been head girl twice. So, um, now, tell me now. We met, as far as I can recall, we hadn't met until we did Gavin and Stacey. Yes. Right. I don't think that you were at the read-through, were you? No, I don't do read-throughs. I, um, I, do you know, this is true, that I had a friend, Nat Parker, who was in an Eddie Murphy movie, and he said that at the read-through, it was an Eddie Murphy sound-alike. Really? Because oh. Eddie's a busy guy, and, uh, you know, <laughs> Eddie knows oh, what he's going to do. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. That I can't believe that. That might be the most showbiz thing I think I've ever heard. But, no, I don't think I was. I think I was. I must have been doing something else. So maybe... I remember you weren't there because I remember when we started rehearsals, we were in that um, old church or like that, not church hall, but those, you know, big rooms or something. And we'd been, I'd been rehearsing for about two days and then I came in and you were sitting in there. I remember being really nervous and going, oh, hello, my name's Joe, nice to meet you. And you turned around and you said, hello, I'm Rob, lovely to meet you. And I don't think I've ever seen that person since. <laughs> <laughs> you were so, you were just so, so it was like, there weren't any gas or anything at all. You were just, you were so incredibly polite and, um, and you, were, you were really lovely. And I've never seen that person since. <laughs> He's... He's gone. Now, you, all you see now are my coping mechanisms, you know, just, just, just my, my jokes. <laughs> now, do you think, I look back on those early episodes of the show, and I think that Bryn is a little bit different. I, I think it's settled into something. How, how would you say with Stacey, do, were you there from the start? Because to me, I would say you were. Really? And you may say you see no difference in Bryn from the beginning. No, I've seen a difference in Bryn. Yeah, I think, yeah, you, 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 I've seen how Bryn's, you know, progressed and how he's moved on and how you've set out, you know, into him. And, but with Stacey, um, yeah, I think, uh, looking back now when I see it, I think I can't believe that people can even understand me because I was so excitable. And <laughs> Whereas <laughs> now, now you're this, you're this vision of zen-like calm. Yeah, I'm so calm all the time now. But I mean, there's some times where I'm like literally flying through everything and I'm so excited. But then when you think about it, I'm so young. Well, I remember getting the script and going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I was, I was so close to giving up on acting anyway because I just lost out on the Dirty Dancing musical. And I was so gutted. I mean, I, 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 I literally pinned everything on that. And then and it had been going on for months and months and months. Uh, we've done like the big dance routine. Uh, we've you know, done acting scenes. And then they put me in this room in Pineapple Dance Studios. So there's like mirrors everywhere. It's like literally only like the stuff that I've ever seen off the telly. And um, with the fella who's, you know, played the original part of Johnny on stage, he was gorgeous and he was a proper dancer. And I was there in my tracksuit. I was so sweaty because I'd been dancing so much. I'd smeared chocolate down myself. So I started acting with him and I thought, oh, in the film, she walks around him. And if you, have you seen Dirty Dancing? And she sort of walks around him, touches his back. So I sort of touched his chest and touched his back as I was speaking. And then I just remember touching his bum because I thought, well, she does that in the film, so I may as well. And then literally out of nowhere, 
Have you seen a dirty dancing? How the fellas, you know, like grab a woman's thigh, shove it up on their on their waist, and then you get swung all the way round. I mean, he was a dancer, and he literally grabbed me, swung me round. I had no control over it. I was just like, oh my god, I've never done an audition like this before in my life. And then just as as he went to take my top, like uh, they went, okay, let's stop there, let's stop there. So I quite obviously was all of a fluster now. Walked out of the room and then the casting director came up to me straight away and went, thank you, Joanna, um, everything that you've done, it's been fantastic, but we don't need you anymore after this. Bye. And I was like, oh, oh okay, um, all right. And then the other two girls were there and then the other three boys. And I, and I just remember thinking, don't cry, don't cry. And I just went, okay, well, lovely uh, to meet all of you. Good luck, everybody. Bye. And I walked out. I managed to hold it together until I got put out onto the strand. And then I literally went hysterical. I just thought I've had enough. I have had enough. I've had enough. And I thought <laughs> of this song. I was such a state and I thought I'm just not going home. I never ever want to go home again. So I crossed the road and I went to the Savoy, booked a room. It was just it was a ridiculous price. It gave my credit card across. And then they took me up in the lift. And in the lift I was openly sobbing. It was awful. I went into the room and um, and then just sat there. They shut the door and just burst out crying. I literally took all my clothes off, put them um, in the bathroom, sat there naked in front of the mini bar, and um, and I remember and I drank a bottle of champagne, ate everything in the mini bar, and all I remember is watching um, John Prescott on the telly doing his speech about something, and I don't even know what it was about. And then it was about a week after that that I got the script then for Gavin and Stacey. And, um, and so I was like, if I don't get this, that is it. I am done. I am done. And so I remember Ruth saying, try a Cardiff accent. I decided my interpretation of a Cardiff accent was a really, really Welsh family's one. So I was talking like this and being very, very Welshy. And, and I remember doing a scene and then Ruth saying, can you just come outside with me for a minute? So I was like, yes, yes. And she said, what are you doing? Why are you speaking like that? And I went, I'm trying to do a Cardiff accent. And she went, just, just don't. Just just do your own accent. It's not a Cardiff accent that you are doing anyway, but just stop speaking like that and just go in and just, just act and do the scenes. And then I went in, carried on, you know, with Matt. And then luckily, thank God, I got the part. Now, I can't remember what your original question was. Um, no. I, oh, if, if Stacey's changed. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that in the beginning, I was still trying to work out Stacey's accent, thinking, oh my gosh, so sometimes I'm a bit Welshier, and then I think now, as it's gone on, I've settled into, well, you know, she's just from Swansea and sounds like me. That's the longest answer anybody has given in any of these interviews, and the good news is that while you've been giving it, they found a vaccine. <laughs> So, you know, the thing was, I got down to the last three to play Johnny in that production. Uh, why are you laughing? Why would you, why would you laugh at that? Why, why is that so ridiculous? You think that's all there is to me, just Uncle Bryn. There's nothing else there. I could have the time of my life, you know? I, I could be, hey, baby. Yes? It could have been a whole other story, couldn't it? Uh, here's what I think, and I'll tell you for why. Nobody puts baby in the corner. It is as simple as that. Yes. I showed this picture to um, Alison. Oh, yes. When I interviewed her. We were filming the wedding fair scene. We stayed at the Vale Hotel, and the Welsh rugby team of the day were there, and we all had a photo together. And my mm -hmm. observation is the faces of the females have a different thing going on than the faces of the males. Oh my gosh, let me Now look at this picture. I mean, so can you see that? <laughs> yes, now I look what everybody's doing. I'm just, I'm just holding my stomach in. James oh. is thinking I'm on my way to Hollywood. Larry's just happy to be in the warm. Now what, what's oh, going through my... your mind there? Oh my gosh, I was so excited. They were just huge. They were just like, animals just like these big gladiator men what about the victims me larry lamb matthew horn james corden what about yes. us what we were sat there just feeling like we'd been chewed up and spat out i know if it was the olden days they'd have come into that hotel and they would have probably clubbed you all over the head thrown us over their shoulders and we'd have been gone with a smile on our faces <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad to bring you back to such happy memories. So um, I, I was thinking, I remember the other day, years ago, I brought the kids to see you in Panto. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, yes. I, I think, was it my first ever Panto? I, I think, I think it was with it. Gareth Gates, was in it? Yes, that was my first ever Panto. Oh gosh, what was I like? I mean, I remember, I think my father-in-law came to see it and then he saw the one the year after that I'd done. And I think my parents said, oh, you know, what do you think in the interval? And he said, well, at least her singing's a bit better this year. <sighs> No. What I'm going to take away from this interview is this image of you and how you set back on that day my own sense of virility. You set it back by about 20 years. Yes. Oh, John, oh. yeah, cackle away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be nice if I saw you dressed in a cardigan and we're filming in, in Barry, that would be nice. I tell you what, I would love it if we got to do another one. I can't, I just, oh, I can't imagine them ending it, finishing it like that. And I just think there's something about three series and then three Christmas specials. Yes. If that would round it off, three series and two Christmas specials, I think, I think we've got to have a third. I, I haven't so. thought of it that way, you're absolutely right. And we've got to do it soon before one of us ends up dying. Not being miserable, not the coronavirus, but we're all why? getting old at <laughs> Why, why, why would you, would you, I'm not the oldest in the, why would you say that? <laughs> it's been lovely talking to you up to a point. Yeah, oh, it's been so nice seeing you and speaking to you. Oh, my God, and thank you so much for doing my interview. You were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just fantastic. What people may not know, Jo is talking about she has a radio show on Radio Wales and and she interviewed me. It was so good. Oh, my God, right? I was so nervous, though, because <laughs> I drank a whole Red Bull before doing it because I stayed up till 2 o'clock the night before literally watching loads of stuff about you on YouTube because I wanted to ask you about oh. what I to you. I wanted to talk about human remains. I mean, I wanted to talk about the trip. I just yeah. wanted to talk about all of the stuff that I loved watching. I, I watched so much stuff and I was so nervous that I woke up the next day and had about three hours sleep and I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. So before doing the show, I downed a can of Red Bull and then before it started, all of the colours and everything started just getting really bright and I started thinking, oh my God, that was a mistake. And then, to balance it out, I drank two regular breakfast teas and a whole bottle of water through the show. Didn't go for a wee at all. By the time I was doing my last interview, I had my jeans completely and utterly undone. And I had to stoop over and try and crawl to the... I couldn't even straighten myself up and try and crawl to the toilet. This was the world's longest wee in my life. <laughs> right. Now, look, please stop experimenting with the dosage. Seek proper <laughs> medical help. Joe, please. Do you remember in Tootsie where the where the where the uh, the agent says to Dustin Hoffman, please get some therapy. That's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.